Here we're using the same file that we did in our last video, animating two cards in Nuke. First, we want to save our file and make sure that we know where it's saved in. We have it in the C drive, users, user, documents, and Nuke file. Once we know where our document's saved, then we can start writing our .bat file. First, we want to open up the notepad. If you can't find it, it's under Start All Programs, Accessories, and Notepad. Next, we want to go to our Computer, Properties, Advanced Settings, Environmental Variables. We want to find the variable called Path. We're going to click Edit, and then Control-C to copy the text, and Control-V to paste it on the notepad. Then we want to add this script right here to the end of our environmental variables so that DOS will know where to find the Nuke executable. That's in our C drive. Program Files, Nuke Version, and if we scroll down we can find both the Nuke Executable as well as the Python Executable. So we want to type semicolon C colon backslash Program Files backslash Nuke Version folder backslash. Once we have this entered into our text, we want to hit Control A to copy all of it, and then Control C to copy, and then we'll go back to our environmental variables and press Control V to paste it. If you've done it correctly, you can see the text you've added in the end. Then we want to hit OK on the three boxes and close out these windows because we don't need them anymore. Now that we've set the environmental variables, we want to work on writing our render bat. First we have nuke version executable, which will start nuke, then we have our frame range, and then x, which signifies where our file is located. We can find more flags in the user's guide on pages 746. I'm going to change this file so that it doesn't work so we can show how to debug it. I'm going to go to File, Save As, save it on my desktop. I'll just name it something stupid. Next we want to open up our hidden folders under the Start menu in the Control Panel, under Appearance and Personalization, Folder Options, under View, we want to look for Hide Extensions and turn it off then hit Apply and OK. Then you should see the file extensions. Where it says .text, we want to click on it twice and change the .text to .bat. It'll give you a warning, but you can disregard it. Now we want to open up our command prompt. I have mine pasted on the desktop, but you can also find it under Start Accessories Command Prompt. We want to drag and drop our bat file into the command prompt and hit enter. It will give us a warning that says nuke is not a recognizable executable, which we knew anyway. If you're having problems getting your program to run, it's easier to drag and drop it to debug it than just to double click on it. We're going to throw away our garbage file. Next, we're going to use the executable file that does in fact work, and we'll look in our destination folder and we'll see that it is in fact printing out the 100 frames of the composition just like we did in our last video, except that the .bat file prints out the frames in a matter of about 20 seconds, whereas the composite file from Nuke took more like 20 minutes. So the .bat file is significantly faster than running it from the program.
Next, we're going to talk about setting up the NukeFrame server. Here, I've opened up a window to my network server. So I'm using Windows Remote. And under Licensing, we'll click Install License, Use Server. Then we want to add our port number, which in my case is 4101. Then we want to put at and either the name or the IP address of our server, which in my case is 192.168.0.13. We are in fact using an RLM server and we'll press OK. If we go to the hard drive on our server, under Program Data, the Foundry, and RLM, we can find the log files for our server. This is where it will tell us what our port number is, which in this case is on Workstation and it's 4101. You also have to have a Nuke I license to run a file share server. If we go under our network and properties, and we go to the IPv4 and properties, we can find the IP address of our host server. Back on our remote desktop, if we go to the Network and Sharing Center also, under Control Panel, we're going to go to Firewall under System and Security, and allow an app through the firewall. We're going to scroll down, and we don't see Nuke, so we'll say Allow Another App, and check to see if it's in the app list. Here we have the Nuke executable, so we're going to press Add, and then make sure to check for private and public networks. And then allow another app. And we'll check to see if Python is in our list, which it is not. So we'll click Browse. And then we will go to the C drive, Program Files x86, Nuke folder. Scroll down until we find the Python executable and hit Open. And then we want to select it in our apps and click Add, also checking for private and public networks. And these are the two apps that we want to add to our firewall. Next, we want to add an exception for our port. So we're going to go to the Control Panel, Windows Firewall, Advanced Settings, and under the Inbound Rules, we want to add a new rule for a port. We'll hit Next. It's a TCP port, and the specific port is 4101. Then we'll click Next, allow the connection, and Next again. Make sure that it's open for all different types of servers and add the name Nuke Port. Then we'll hit Finish. If we notice at the very top of our inbound rules, Nuke Port is now an exception to the firewall. We will do the same process for the outbound rules, adding a new rule. For a port, clicking next, a TCP port, specific port is 4101. Clicking next, allow the connection, next again, and make sure that it's open for all networks and add the name Nuke Port. Now that we've added our ports to firewall exceptions, we can go back and set our environmental variables for each of the network nodes. Then we want to restart our network node to make sure that the environmental variable has taken place. Next, we want to go to our control panel. Go to Appearance and Personalization, Folder Options, Show Hidden Files and Folders. We want to check Show Them. Hit Apply and OK. This will give us access to hidden folders. Now if we go down to our C drive, we can see that Program Data is available, which is a hidden folder. Under the Foundry, under RLM, if we look at our license for the network node, we'll notice that it is different than the one for the server. It just has the host IP address for 
the network server, and the port number. Next, if we open up our notepad, we can check out the frame server text. This can be found also in the user's guide. Let me configure it so we can see all of it on our small screen here. The first thing we want to do is run Python. So we have Python executable. Then we have the address for the run frame server Python script, which is under program files, nuke, Python extension, site packages, foundry, frame server, nuke, and then our script. Notice that it is in apostrophe because it has spaces in between program files. We also have flags for the number of workers, the threads, the amount of memory, the URL of our host, and the nuke path. If you're running a cross platform, like between a Macintosh and Windows, you want to also remap your network drive. But in this case, both of these are Windows, so I don't need the last script. Next, we're opening up our program files under the nuke folder, and we're going to drop our frameserver.bat file into the program folder. Then we're going to create a shortcut and drag it onto the desktop. First, we're going to change the name of the shortcut to frameserver. and then change the icon so it looks fancy. We're going to click Change Icon, OK, Browse, and navigate to our Nuke folder. If we scroll down, we can find the icons for Nuke, Nuke X, and Nuke Studio. We're going to add the Nuke Studio because it has an S. Now we have a pretty shortcut to our .bat file. We open up our command prompt and drag and drop our shortcut and press enter, we can see our script running. It should return to the command prompt after the script has run properly. If we go into edit and preferences, under the Performance tab, Threads and Processes, we can see the number of frame server processes to run. I have mine set at 4. Next, if we go to our Task Manager under Processes, we'll see that we have our main Nuke process running. Then if we scroll down, we'll see that we have two Nuke processes running, one for the command prompt and one for the main window. If we run our frameserver.bat file with four threads, then we'll notice that we in fact have four processes running under our task manager as opposed to two. If we go to window and scroll down to the script editor and import this text here for the Herio bridge, which can be found under the help documentation, Nuke User Guide, page 934, we have the text to open up the ping for our workers. We can copy it right out of the PDF document and then paste it into our script editor. Once we have the text in the script editor, we want to press the Run button. It will run and give us a ping on what our workers are doing. You can see here that worker 1, which is our workstation, is listed, as well as worker 0, which is also the workstation, because we are not connected to the network right now. If, in fact, we were connected to the network, worker 0 and worker 1 would have a different name, as you can see here in the user guide using Henry and Bob. Once we verified that our workers are connected, 
Then we can go to our right node and hit render. And if in fact our network is connected, we will see multiple right nodes in our progress bar. Here I've only got one computer hooked up, so there are no multiple right nodes. The reason that I can't get my network connected is because I'm using a node-based server which does not have a video card. You have to have OpenGL 2.1 on your computer. OpenGL is still in development, so it's not surprising that you can't just drag and drop an OpenGL node onto your network node. The other process would be to dissect the nuke program and delete the section that requires OpenGL. But in this case, since I'm not using ray traced shadows or 3D material reflections, I don't precisely need to use Nuke Studio. Nuke Studio is the only member of the Nuke family that uses Nuke Frame Server. So in this case, since I'm using it just for compositing, I should be able to run my nuke.bat files on my network without any problems.